In the last video of this week, let's discuss how can we apply Markov Chain Monte Carlo to Bayesian neural networks. So this is your usual neural network, and it has weights on each edge, right? So each connection has some weights which we, which we train during uh, basically fitting our neural network into data. Bayesian neural networks, instead of weights, they have distributions on weights. So we treat W, the weights, as a latent variable, and then to do predictions, we marginalize W out. And this way, instead of just hard set value for W11, like free, we'll have a distribution on W, a posterior distribution which we'll use to obtain the predictions. And so uh, to make a prediction for a new data object X, and uh, using the training data set of objects X train and Y train, we do the following. We say that this thing equals to integral where we marginalize out w. So we consider all possible values for the weights w and we average the predictions with respect to them. So here your p of y given x and w is your usual neural network output. So it's uh, you have your image x for example and you uh, pass it through your neural network with parameters w. And then you record its predictions. And you do that, you do that for all possible values for the parameters w. So there are infinitely many values for w, and for each of them you uh, pass your image through the corresponding neural network and write down the, uh, the prediction. And then you average all these predictions with weights, where weights are the posterior distribution on w, which basically says us how probable is that this particular w was uh, uh, accord according to the training data set. So you have kind of an infinitely large ensemble of neural networks with all possible weights and uh, with uh, basically importance being proportional to the posterior distribution on W. And this is full Bayesian inference applied to neural networks. And this way we can get some benefits from uh, probabilistic programming uh, in neural networks. So we can estimate uncertainty, we may uh, tune some hyperparameters naturally and stuff like that. And so we may notice here that this prediction, this integral, equals to an expected value of uh, your output for your neural, net neural network with respect to the posterior distribution W. So basically it's uh, an expected output of your neural network with weights defined by the posterior. And so to solve this problem, let's use uh, your favorite Markov chain Monte Carlo procedure. So let's approximate this expected value with sampling, for example, with Gibbs sampling. And uh, if we acquire a few samples from the posterior distribution on W, we can use that W, so that weights of neural networks. And then if we have like, for example, 10 samples, for each sample is a neural network, is a weight for some neural network. And then for a new image, we can just pass it through all these 10 neural networks and then average their predictions to get approximation of this full Bayesian inference with an integral. And how can we sample from, from the posterior? Well, we know it up to normalization constant, as usually. So uh, here, this posterior distribution on W is proportional to the likelihood. Uh, so basically, the prediction of neural network on the training data set with parameters W times the prior P of W, which you can define as you wish. For example, uh, just a standard normal distribution. And you have to divide by normalization constant, which you don't know. But it's okay because Gibbs sampling doesn't care, right? So it's a valid approach, but the thing, uh, the problem here is that Gibbs sampling or Metropolis Hastings sampling, for that matter, uh, it depends on the whole data set to make its uh, steps, right? We discussed at the end of the previous video that sometimes Gibbs sampling uh, is okay with using mini batches to to make moves, but sometimes it's not. And uh, as far as I know, uh, in Bayesian neural networks, it's not a good idea to use Gibbs sampling with uh, mini batches. So we have to do something else. If we don't want to, you know, when we run our neural net our Bayesian neural network on a large data set, we don't want to spend uh, time proportional to the uh, to the size of the whole large data set or at each duration of training. We want to avoid that. So let's see what else can we do. And here comes the really nice idea of uh, something called Langevin Monte Carlo. And this is uh, basically 
Uh, so it works as follows. Say we want to sample from the posterior distribution P of W given some data. So training data X train and Y train. Let's start from some initial value for the weights W. And then in it, in iterations, updates, uh, do updates like this. So here we update our W to be our previous W plus epsilon, which is kind of a learning rate times gradient of our logarithm of uh, the posterior plus some random noise. So the first part of this expression is actually a usual gradient ascent applied to train the ways of your neural network. Uh, and you can see it uh, here clearly. So if you look at your posterior P of W given data, it will be proportional to logarithm of prior plus logarithm of uh, the conditional distribution, P of Y given X and W. And you can rewrite it as follows uh, by using the property of logarithm that like logarithm of multiplication is sum of logarithms. And you, okay, you should also have a normalization constant here, z, but uh, it's a constant with respect to our optimization problem, so we don't care about it, right? And uh, on practice, this uh, first term, the prior, if you took the logarithm of a standard normal distribution, for example, you just get some constant times uh, the Euclidean norm of uh, your weights w. So it's your usual weight decay, which people uh, oftenly use in neural networks. And the second term is usual cross entropy, usual objective that people use to train neural networks. So this particular update is actually a gradient uh, descent or ascent with step size epsilon applied to your neural network to find the best possible values for parameters. But on each duration, you add some Gaussian noise with, uh, with variance being uh, epsilon, so proportional to your learning rate. And if you do that, uh, and if you choose your learning rate to be infinitely small, you can prove that this procedure will eventually generate you a sample from the desired distribution P of W given data. So basically, if you omit the noise, you will just have a usual gradient ascent. And if you use infinitely small learning rate, then you will definitely go to just the local maximum around the current point, right? But if you add the noise on each iteration, Theoretically, you can end up in any point in the parameter space, like any point, right? Uh, but of course, with more probability, you will end up somewhere around the local maximum. If you're doing that, you will actually sample from the posterior distribution. So you will end up in points with high probability, oft more often than in points with low probability. On practice, you will, not uh, you will never use uh, infinitely small learning rate, of course. But one thing you can do about it is to correct this scheme with Metroclus Hastings. So you can say that theoretically I should use infinitely small learning rate. I use not infinitely small, but like 0.1. So I have to correct. I'm sampling from the wrong distribution. And I can do Metroclus Hastings correction uh, to reject some of the moves and then to guarantee that I will sample from the correct distribution. But since we want to do some large scale optimization here, and to work with mini batches, we will not use this Metropolis Hastings correction because it's not scalable. And we will just use small learning rate and hope for the best. So this way we will not actually generate samples from the true posterior distribution W, but it will be close enough if your learning rate is small enough. So it's, it's close enough to the infinitely small, right? So the overall scheme is as follows. We initialize some weights of your neural network then we uh, do a few iterations or epochs of your favorite SGD, but on each iteration you add some noise, some Gaussian noise with a, uh, variance being equal to the learning rate, to your update. And notice here also that you can't change learning rate at all at any stage of your sampling, or you will also break the properties of the this Langevin Monte Carlo idea. And then after doing a few iterations, like 100 of them, you may say that, okay, I believe that now I have already converged. So let's collect the uh, following samples and use them as actual samples from, from the posterior distribution. Okay, This is the usual idea of Monte Carlo. And then finally, for a new point, you can just average the predictions uh, of your uh, 
of your hundred slightly different neural networks on this new object to get uh, the prediction for your object. But this is really expensive, right? So there is this really nice and cool idea that we can use a separate neural network that will approximate the behavior of this ensemble. So uh, we are simultaneously training this Bayesian neural network, and simultaneously with that, we're training, we're using its behavior to train a student neural network that will try to uh, try to mimic the behavior of this uh, Bayesian neural network in the usual one. And so it has quite a few details there on how to do it efficiently, but it's really cool. So if you're interested in these kind of things, check it out.